that's messed up. That's really messed up. The Tour de France is fast approaching. Pogacar is ready to defend and he will do it while on Danish soil, but he's also going to a place he's never been in France this year. He's going to Lille and Arenberg, which will be appearing in this year's edition on stage 5, where they will be treated with cobbled roads. With that in mind, yours truly, with Scott and Mr Critical himself, Ewan, decided to go on a little trip around France to see the sights that will be in this year's tour. We decided, of course, to meet in Lille, where the stage will start, but then we go to the cobbled rows of where stage 5 shall end. But while we were there, we decided to maybe challenge ourselves in a four super mini stage race across France. While we were here on our bikes, we just thought, well, it just seems like the perfect idea. The first race, we shall do this on the second to last cobble sector of stage 5, which is called De Bourgogne à Milan Fossi, which is a pretty nasty cobble sector for us mere mortals. Scott brought his lightweight bike. Not the best idea for the first challenge. Ewan hasn't been racing for a long time, but has taken up cycling once again and has been training and has the frame for the cobbles, but let's not forget me, the man who destroyed Scott on the nasty Royal Crescent, showing that cobbles really don't affect me. Of course, if you want to see that video where I took the KOM as well as destroying Scott, then the link for that video will be in the description below. It's quite a classic. But of course, the reason why I probably won is because of the wise move of deflating the tyres to about 60 psi. A risky move you might think, but it's worth it for the win. I did the same in this case, and I even advised Ewan to do the same. But Scott kept his at 100 psi. Not going to be a good ride for him indeed. So let's see how we all get on. Okay, here we go. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful day. I mean, this is probably what you're going to see for most of this segment. And now we've actually reached the cobbles. And it's looking pretty, pretty darn bad. And at this point now, I'm actually I'm trying to catch up with Scott. We have no frontal view, sadly. But he will be coming on uh, now. There he is. It was at this moment he knew he f***ed up. And there we go, he's come completely dropped now, no chance. Oh my god, this is crazy, we're on the thing. The cobble sector, I'm way behind. Whoa! Looking... Doing this with one hand is probably not a good idea. Proper struggling there, aren't you, Scott? I don't know how I'm going to win. Holy crap. That looks very nasty from my point of view. Yes, it is terrible, isn't it, mate? Is there any chance we can catch up? Nah, doesn't look like it. Looks like I've completely dropped him at this point now. And he's about to give up. He's giving up. So third place is secured then. <laughs> Certainly is. Now back to me. At this point now, I'm trying to catch up with Ewan. And now it's looking even worse than before. Although there is a lot of grass around the place, which is a great advantage to have. And look at that concentration phase. Well focused on trying to catch you in here at this point to gain the three points lead of this race. Is at this point here that we actually are going left and right trying to find the best possible course. And there it is. There it is. This is the point where he's now dropped and now Jack is in the lead. He's in the lead. He's now looking to take the win of this first race. The favourite is about to win. We're about probably halfway through the segment now. I'm just calling to say I... And Ewan is struggling to even keep up. He's at least seven seconds behind at this point. And he's looking like the, the gap is actually getting bigger. Jack is looking very confident here. Well, it actually looks like Ewan's trying to catch up now. He's putting some more power into his pedals to catch up. It's looking like a very good race. Who knows what could happen here. Race is nearly over now. Ewan needs to make up some time if he wants to win this race. Jack is still in control of this. 
taking a sweet time not going overboard not overdoing it because if there's one puncher here that's it this game is over for the sprinter still focused he looks back to see how far Ewan is he can't see where he is because if one little bad move and that's it he'll be on the floor and the collarbone will be probably be broken looks like he's trying to get a gap in here at least now it certainly is Ewan's looking a little bit more further away now this is not looking good for Ewan he's getting even further look at this looks like Jack is actually putting some power into the pedals now because he knows that the end is near we're getting there now he thinks it's over is it over it probably is now at this point actually we are nearing the end we're nearing the end now that's it we are we have finished the segment that's it the winner is the favorite the in-house sprinter Jack no celebrations just takes the win that's it You know, that's not as bad as you make it out. I'm being perfectly honest. To start starting off in it was like it was a fucking shock. An eternity later, Scott turned up. Oh, you, you've uploaded to Strava to find it, the segment. So we've just done the first one. I was about 10 minutes behind these two. Yeah, that was a, that was a nasty one. Yeah, you was at least seven seconds behind me. At the very least. Yeah, I mean, I, I led everybody on onto the segment. Bear that in mind. Jack sort of raced round, but I went backwards. No, but the, the thing is, like, you had to put this into context. Wait, like, Jack, let's see the, the let's see the. Oh. I don't know how any climbers are going to do this. This is dreadful, and this isn't even a hard sector, is it? But what sector is it? I'm gonna find out. I, I don't think it's hard because it wasn't that bad, as you guys made out. Bear in mind, it's hard because you know, the right tire pressure it makes a difference. Yeah, I came on a hill climb bike with 100 PSI or 100 bar, no, 100 bar not, 6 bar, no? I think it's, they put at least 70 PSI or 80 PSI up to that in their tyres at Power Rupert, that's how really low their PSI is in the yeah. But this will be the penultimate sector on the stage uh, for the Tour de France. They haven't really done anything with cleaning it up, a lot of it's still overgrown in the middle. While we're letting Mr. Critical babble on, we should point out a very useful tip by me. The best thing to do is go where the grass is greenest. Yes, the grass, like the grass verge. I know they always like, they usually avoid the crown. They try to go to the sides. Yeah. Going on the sides. And without babbling on too much, let's hear what everyone thought about the performance. All right, Scott, you came last in that cobble section. Surprisingly. <laughs> Not surprisingly. I, I mean, I'm glad we weren't doing it today. Look at the weather. I know. Well, I think there would actually been three, well, at least one broken collarbone. Uh, what do I think about my third place? Um, yeah, cobbles are absolutely horrendous. I thought my bike was gonna break in pieces. I think I probably went the slowest out of anyone ever on that segment as well. So um, yeah, third place, I'll have to be content with that. I wasn't expecting anything from that segment anyway. So uh, yeah. that challenge, I wasn't expecting to win, so. Third place is probably where, I didn't think I was gonna be that far behind. That's the only thing, but I didn't think I was gonna win it. Yeah, well, you got three more to make up, but the other dog himself here surprised yeah. us all. It was leading for a while. Well, might as well call me even Willems because I'm, I'm, I'm feeling very Flandrian after that one. You know, second place is not bad. The cobbles weren't as, as overwhelming as I thought they were gonna be. I mean, Arenberg is another story, which you'll see in, in a different video, but I mean, I'm, A, I'm surprised the bike didn't break. B, I'm surprised I didn't fall off. But I mean, the beauty of the cobbles is that it, it just, it's a full body experience. The brain, the hands, the body, everything is shaking. Everything's an overload. I'm surprised by how well I handled it, to be honest. And as for me, winner, obvious, Matthew van der Poel, in mortal form, really, but yeah, I think it was a good idea to put me tire pressure down because I think that made the whole thing a lot better. You know, like, well, not better, it just made it 
bearable. More comfortable. More comfortable. It was unbearable at some points. And he was pretty difficult to overtake. I had to fully concentrate and pick my right moment. And I saw an opening on the cobbles thinking that's actually a nice bit of flatness there. So I just went for it. And it's true, like I said earlier in the video, which, yeah. and it's true what I said earlier in the video that the gra uh, where, where, where the grass is greener, it's the best place on the cobbles. It really does make a difference, as you would agree yeah. with me as well. Because for some reason it makes it less, you know, bouncy. It gives you some kind of suspension, because that, that makes sense, because grass is quite soft, which does give some kind of suspension. So I think that's really best top tip on the cobbles. Find where the grass is greenest, because there is still grass popping out of cobbles around here in France. So that's my top advice, as well as the tire pressure. But other than that, I'm happy for the win. I've got to keep that consistently now to try and win. Yeah, and on that note. Next one is in Longwy. We're doing a time trial, so that's going to be a quite funny profile. You can see the profile here. And uh, I don't know who's the favorite here. I'm quite optimistic, but I think these two boys are quite optimistic as well. Ewan, Jack, Longwy, do you think you're going to take the win? Well, as long as it's not so steep, the first part is very steep. Yeah, I kind of. I don't know. I feel like this but, could be. This could be an interesting one. Yeah, I think I can make most on descent. You know, because we don't. We're not bound by the UCI rules, and I can do a super tuck, and I can do, hmm. and I can do the illegal over the hands handlebar and become very aero. So we'll see. Or a viral sensation. Mm. I mean, descending is not my forte. What about climbing? I mean, I, uh. <laughs> Gonna be a great time trial. Uh, I mean, I have no idea what weight I am, so I can't really make a comment on that. But like, I feel like climbing could be decent. I like it when it goes uphill. It's almost masochist there, but it's nice. There you go, favorite right there, probably. Good. He'll, he'll do a salmon yates so and make it up on the climb. The aim is to be consistent throughout the th throughout the week, is to get second place in every in every single challenge, and then therefore I'll be in a decent place. Mm. All right, that's it for this video. Yeah, so if you like this video, like. So if you like this video, like it, and of course, make sure you subscribe to the Sackland Dane. It really helps us a lot. And if you enjoy this now, uh, you can become a channel member if you want to help us out as well in this uh, fun time of the year. You can do that over on the channel, click the join button, and also check out all our other endeavors over at the Cycling Dane Extra channel as well and the gaming channel. And if you want uh, the extra Demi Tour de France, you can listen to episode three of the Potato Chase Cycling Podcast which is available in the description below.